work. Can you share um, with us some of the work that you've done in Florida to define DeSantis, not just in Florida, but beyond the borders of Florida with the Don't Say Gay and other campaigns? Oh, Nadine, you're on mute. I'm, I'm new to this uh, Zoom. Hey, everyone, thanks so much. And, and thanks for the question, because I think it's it's an important place where I hope that I leave people with hope that is built on the what we are already experiencing, right? And number one, I think it's important to understand that that backlash is evidence of progress. In fact, it's a lagging indicator that the culture has been shifting. And we have been in this kind of backlash before, especially when you look at the things that have been targeted at the LGBTQ community. You know, DeSantis is Anita Bryant. 2.0. He's using the same save our children, groomer language, all of that. And so there are things that we have learned from that past. Um, and one of the things that I think is critical to understand is that, you know, Trump and DeSantis are avatars for this existential fear uh, among a certain swath, a significant swath of white voters, that they are about to be a minority in a country whose demographics are shifting. It is the browning of America and the graying of America. And the reason it's important to understand that is because all of these culture war fires are, are linked to one another. Uh, the attack on trans kids has as much to do with Black Lives Matter protests against George Floyd's murder as anything else. And because we understand that the same ideological arson is creating all of these culture war fires, we are building coalitions that are unprecedented, you know, and that is critical to defining DeSantis in a manner that uh, doesn't simply derail his path to the White House, but serves as a repudiation of his policies and his rhetoric. And so the critical things that, that we recognize were one, stop his bad legislation, anything we can't stop, mitigate, build a coalition and define him. And part of building that coalition has also been tapping into this incredible wave of new activists and organizers. Um, these are folks who never thought they'd have to show up at a school board meeting, but now their kids are under attack. Books are being taken off shelves. Um, you know, they, their favorite teachers are being told we were required to peel safe, safe school stickers off of our windows. And there is a slow dawning realization uh, that is uh, speeding up, where people are realizing just how extreme, just how extreme DeSantis is. And so, you know, now we're out hustling them on the ground. We are overwhelming them at school board meetings, so much so that yesterday, the Sarasota School Board, which is dominated by Moms for Liberty, in fact, the head of Moms for Liberty is a school board member there, they shot down a contract with the firm connected to the Christian Hillsdale College because of the overwhelming local turnout. A Republican House member who campaigned as pro-LGBTQ and pro-abortion betrayed all those promises and tried to come to Miami Pride and rainbow wash his image. He was hounded every single inch of, you know, of that parade route with people booing him, holding up signs. Um, you've never seen that before. We've also built huge uh, new alliances at the national level. We have a situation room that includes you know, all of the key LGBTQ players um, where we are immediately sharing what we learn, white labeling materials so other states can use them, huddling with First Amendment groups, student organizations, abortion and healthcare access advocates, parents, as I said, that are newly emerging in the fight. And there is a wave of student activism right now that has to be supported and nurtured. They bring energy, they bring passion, and they rely on established organizations to help ensure they've got the permits, they've got the infrastructure in place. Um, but the, the, the impact of student voices, we saw it in Tennessee, we're seeing it at the local level. The other thing that I think is really important, I'm gonna drop these into the, uh, I'll drop these into the chat. You know, we've gotta be more willing and nimble when it comes to developing messages and hitting them with messages. One of the, pivot points for us was we took this gamble and invested like $35,000 into making two ads, one called Heroes that featured a little girl at the walking to the front of her classroom to give her speech. And it was supposed, supposed to be about, you know, you give a speech about a hero. And 
she decides that her heroes are her two moms. And, and so this was an ad projecting what school would be like under the Don't Say Gay bill. And when it came out, they, you know, DeSantis went after it, said it was, you know, outrageous and all of these things. The two things that are important about that was, if anything, it was too gentle. It was too kind in, in understanding what was actually happening in schools. But the good news was that ad, once it aired, we began to fundraise like crazy. We were able to keep it up in multiple markets. By the time this, the bill was signed into law, it had earned over $2 billion in uh, earned media, and it changed the character of the conversation. So I'm saying all of this primarily to say we are defining him as the, the book banner, the censor, the history whitewasher, the extremist around abortion, and we are seeing those messages resonate. He, he tried to bat back the uh, book banning uh, allegations by going on a press conference calling, calling it the book banning hoax, but people are beginning to wake up, and I think you're seeing that in some of his um, potential funders who are now speaking publicly, you know, saying he's gone, con he's gone too far. Uh, you are seeing some folks who were considered in the bag endorsements for him um, uh, backing Trump. And so we really have to keep applying this pressure. The last thing I will say is that we are the front line of this fight. We are the perfect storm. We are the state where a sociopath and a narcissist are battling it out in the one and two position for, uh, for, for president. And I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Right now, we are in an amazing moment of possibility. The marriage fight that uh, I'm, I'm a veteran of that war. And the irony was that they thought coming after us state by state by state would close the door and foreclose any possibility of marriage equality. And instead what they did was they called a question. They raised uh, a fight. They brought the fight to us and people who never thought of themselves as political stepped into that. And so instead of just stopping the, the attacks on marriage, they actually accelerated the day when marriage equality became the law of the land. And similarly, this is the image I think it's really important for everyone to have right now. I, I, I tell people, imagine that this is a slingshot and they've grabbed that slingshot and they're walking it backwards. And with every to the world that feels most comfortable for them and most difficult for us. And our job is not simply when we break the grip that they have uh, to bring us back to where we are. What always happens after the backlash is we project further into the future, into a world sometimes beyond our wildest imaginings. And so our challenge right here is to use this time where there is no quick fix to build that unprecedented coalition, to create that irresistible vision for a future that is not based in the fear that has built the MAGA Trump DeSantis um, Republican Party, but one where everyone can see themselves. That multiracial future where everyone, even some of the people aligned against us right now, they have to be able to see themselves, their kids and their grandkids in that future. And that's the work that we have in front of us right now. And that's the work we're doing. We do not have to match them dollar for dollar, but we have to be resourced to, to get in the game.